Diagnosing some fuel issues today on the 600RS. Last season, I was having an issue where you'd stand it up, full throttle, and it would kind of die. It felt definitely a fuel starve. It didn't feel like any other ignition issues or anything like that. It felt pretty distinct to be fuel to me. My first thought was float level, so I'm gonna check that. Um, then I put up a Facebook post on the, on the Race Sleds Facebook group, some knowledgeable guys. They, uh, some guys suggested checking the tank, because there's, a, there's a, a line in the tank, I'll show you in a second, I'll explain all about that. There's also um, a couple little lines up here that you could that people delete, the fuel sight line. A lot of people say to get rid of that and it causes a lot of issues, I guess, with leaks and, and um, however the fuel system works here. We'll have, we'll have a look. And there's also uh, uh, a power jet in the carburetors of these. So it's actually an electronically controlled, um, I guess, a fuel circuit. And you can totally block that off and then just raise the mains. I don't know, I think they, they say 80 or 90 numbers, right? So it kind of compensates for what, for what for the losses of that that uh, powered circuit so there's a few things to look at here i'm just i figured i'd pull you guys in because i haven't been able to find any videos on this myself and the fuel system to me is um still learning it right so maybe some content but that would help you guys out okay here's the tank issue tanks out of the sled you've got where it normally sucks from down here and i guess up here is sort of a vent it plums back in i'll show you on the fuel lines in the sled but there's a little cap here that you can remove i just stuck a couple of allen keys into it and Spun it off with a pry bar. So you can see right in. Unfortunately, I never got so lucky with my issue be that this easy. You can see inside the tank, there's a fuel filter connected here, which looks pretty high up, but if you pull it up and you can kind of really see, there's another line that goes down, and on the end of that line is another fuel filter with a weight on it. So actually, there is a, they obviously did plan for the sled to be still up. The filter's kind of probably down here. Right, so it can suck from here, or probably the main suction is up here. Right, so this is kind of when it stood up, it can dr draw fuel back here, and up here is a normal fuel filter. That's how it stood up, and unfortunately, that's not my issue because uh, it, it was all uh, perfect when I pulled it out. So we're gonna have to keep looking and see what else we can find. We ruled out the tank, so let's have a look at the rest of the fuel system, kind of get an understanding of how it works, because obviously the only way we're gonna diagnose this is uh, we if we kind of get an idea of at least how how fuel flows and how things. Go together pretty simple system these sleds um, you just got to have a look at it so we got first off here fuel comes out of the tank goes in this main line there's a t right away this t goes up into your fuel sight line um, which kind of goes to this here i'm not sure what this is i'm not sure i'm sure this is not how this sled would have came from the factory um capped off like this i put the bolt into it because the previous owner just had it left open um which I'm sure is an issue. This goes up to the top of the tank uh, right here. See the little nipple, I guess it's, it's um, uh, just like a vent. And then up, this goes down through here and actually just goes to the fender. So it's, it's, it's just a straight up vent to uh, vent to atmosphere. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all this. I'm gonna delete the fuel sight line and obviously this dead piece here. And I'm, I'm just gonna go straight to this line here, to this T, right? which is that line goes up to your primer up here, which is on your, uh, kind of your dashboard, right? And then this is your other primer line, which goes down. Let me try and follow it with you guys. This primer line comes down to the little T and it goes into each carburetor, right? The little T just goes into the sides of the carburetors. Um, sets it for the primer. So the main fuel for the carburetors, it goes in through this line. And that line immediately loops around back and comes into this little device here, which is your fuel pump. Fuel pump also has a line that goes down to the engine. I guess that's how it gets its pressure to actually pump, right? And then we got two main feed lines that go straight to the carburetor, self-explanatory. Um, and the carburetors themselves. I'm assuming this here is the power valve because obviously I don't think there's any other, um, any other uh, like circuits in here that would need power besides the power valve circuit, right? Because the the uh, throttle position center is up here, so you pull your throttle here on the, on the thumb. The cable comes down to this three split. Two goes to two go to the carburetors, and one goes to this little just a straight up sensor position sensor, right? So when people talk about about uh, the say one power valves, I believe they leave these connected, right? Because if not, it'll. Uh, it, this sled will know they're disconnected and it'll, and it'll do some, um, I'm not sure if it'll pull timing, but I think there's some issues with actually just, just un straight up unplugging these. So what you do is you take out the float bowl, which we'll have a look at after, and you just plug them mechanically so there's no, uh, no, fuel, no fuel flow through. 
But as far as I can tell, that's kind of how the fuel system works. There's a primer, um, there's a fuel sight line, which, is, which I'm gonna disconnect, a vent for the tank. Uh, obviously the tank needs that. There's a fuel pump, which, which gets its vacuum or pressure from the uh, crankcase and then the carburetors, right? So this is, this is a pretty simple system. Even though it's a twin carb system, it's not, it's not too bad. We just gotta kinda make sure everything's tight, which I did before. I'm sure you can see when I was showing you around, there's some zip ties and stuff. I made sure everything at least had a zip tie and the connection was tight, um, but there's issues somewhere. And I'm thinking now with the tank being good and with, uh, I can't see that fuel sight line causing my issue. The guy said to delete it, so I'm gonna do it because it also doesn't work that well, but, um, yeah, I think my, my issue might be in the carburetors. I can't see it being any, any issue other than that because I did it before I rebuilt the motor and after I rebuilt the motor, so, that, so the motor is not the issue. Um, clutching, I don't think it's a clutching issue. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like a clutching issue. It's not like it's losing RPMs. It's like it totally, totally dies and starves of fuel, right? So we'll see. Okay, I decided to pull the carbs off. It's pretty simple. Two screws in the top. You'll see it if you're doing it around the top of the carburetor and then this slide just pulls out and once you got the slide out in your hand this is inside th like this will be inside of it and the, the cable will be in this little notch so you kind of pull back the spring push the cable in and it'll pop out of the notch and then you pull the whole thing out pull the slide out in your hand and once the slides out in your hand you undo this little nut because this needle will be stuck out of it like this you poke it through so you can see the needle will be stuck out so you undo this little nut it's a six mil i believe it is and they can pop the jet the, the needle jet through this needle jet's really important it kind of controls your uh mid throttle um your mid throttle fuel delivery right so there's a little clip on it. i'm not sure how this camera's going to pick this up there's a little clip and some grooves and um you can check the forms everyone talks about what needle position they're on what clip they're at so that's the guy there. Now, just to get this carb apart, I did, I did, do, I'm doing it this way because it's easier to get these little Phillips screws out on the bench. I gotta take them all apart anyway. I already gotta take the slides out of them, so it's just easier to do it this way. Be careful not to strip the uh, Phillips heads. They're delicate, and this sled's been not been apart in a while, so. All this stuff is kind of stuck in there. All right, take the bowl off and you've got your power jet here and these older carbs on this 08. I think they may have changed it in 2012. I'm not actually sure about that, so check someone else. But um, there was a power jet circuit, which is which added fuel on uh, basically a full throttle application or kind of ramped up the full throttle. It was, you know, that's mostly where it dealt, um, dealt with fuel delivery. So people will take this little jet out. I hope you guys can see that and they would block it off with a straight up grub screw. I'll show you, it's the guy done on this other one. See, I just pulled the jet out, which is a tiny little jet with a little flat top screwdriver. You're not gonna be able to see all this, but tiny jet, pull it out, put a grub screw in, just straight up block it off. Cause you can't, like I said, you can't just disconnect the electrical cause you'll throw codes and uh, the sled will not be happy. So the alternative is, is just to uh, physically block it off. And then you run, not sure. It, it seems to be well, obviously jetting is all kind of subjective to uh, your location and elevation and all that stuff. But yeah, guys go about like eighty to one hundred sizes up. So if you're running like two seventy, you might go to like a three sixty ish. You know what I mean? So it's it's uh, all that stuff. All that information's out there. You don't need to hear that from me. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the power jet. Little flat top. The screwdriver is a bit too big, but it works for the time being. We'll get it out. Pull the power jet out. And get your little grub screw. Tiny little guy. And thread it in. You can see at the power jet actually right there in the corner of the bowl, this corner here, you can see it's a hole so it sucks full fuel right from the bottom of the bowl up through the hole. So it comes up through here in the actual carburetor body itself, goes up through into the power jet and does its whole thing. So now we're hard jetted, which on the 08 is very important for reliability. 
apparently it's super common for uh, for the power just to fail. There's lots of sensors and different things that it uses, and, and a sled this old, it kind of, uh, it's kind of a shot in the dark as if any of that stuff actually works anymore, so. Okay, float adjustment, which is my initial thought of my, of my uh, issue with this sled. So I was thinking, these floats were adjusting improperly and starving it for fuel when it came up because obviously these floats uh, control the flow of fuel from the tank or from the fuel pump in this case into the bowl, right? So I, so I thought that maybe the, the fuel level was too low and it was starving for fuel. I'm sure like there's a bunch of awesome videos online, but uh, let me see if you guys can see it. Oh, you can see it. Cool. Um, it's got, they, they got the floats here and in back is a little needle sort of when the floats lower right because this cover is upside down, upside down right now when they when they lower it opens that little needle lets fuel in and then when the fuel level gets to the right level they go back up and close it's if you re read the forums on do talk uh a lot of guys are just kind of doing trial and error right which like the just it's hard to find a proper adjustment um for these sleds for this carburetor there's, there is proper ways to do this, like a general way of how you of how you adjust carb float. Um, but I, I did find a guide online where a guy measures from the bottom of the main the main jet base here, so my, my fingers to to the highest point on the float. So he measures from here to the peak, and uh, it's about 14 millimeters is a kind of like a, a starting point, um, 14 14.5 14 maybe. So I measured these and they're about 14.2 mil, um, which is kind of disappointing because I, I figured, I was hoping for something that would be way off, but they're kind of close. So I think I might just leave them because I'm doing a, like a lot of big changes here, which is a no-no, obviously, if you're used to uh, playing with tuning motors in any, in any capacity, obviously you just change one thing and test it. I'm changing a bunch of stuff. So I think I might leave the, the floats alone. I'm gonna hard jet it. I'm gonna get rid of some of those crappy fuel lines and um see where we go from there uh this you know this this is a bit of a different thing because unfortunately i don't have a i don't have the uh, race manual for this sled so i don't have nice service manual and um information is a little, little bit more scarce with the race sleds more or less you know so i'm gonna leave it i think and we'll try it um, i definitely want to just at least run the sled with the jetting changes and stuff before i start changing floats also right Cause, because that's a little bit arbitrary um yeah, I wish I had some more of a concrete answer here. It's always difficult when you're diagnosing something and you kind of just get this. But, but I think we're jetting changes. So I'm basically at sea level, right? I'm basically sea level. And I'm probably riding minus five Celsius-ish to zero Celsius. That's kind of usually when I'm riding. And what's been into it is uh, 270 mains. Pretty common. Maybe a touch lean from what, from what got some guys are saying. And a 45 pilot. And the and the uh, needle jet is on the second clip, All right? That's that's what that, that's a pretty close trail setup. The sled rips hard; doesn't really seem to be overheating. Um, EGTs look good. I can't give you a, a concrete number now, but I can remember last year they were fine. So now hard jet, and I think I'm gonna go three seventy main. A lot of guys say that when they hard jet, they probably end up. They probably make some guys were starting at starting at, at uh, three eighty, and then end up working on it to like three sixty, maybe three fifty. Um, I think I'm going to go with 370, play it a bit safe. Probably end up leaving it there because I don't mind it being a little bit rich as long as it doesn't foul plugs. So I'm going to go with uh, 370 main. I'm going to go down a uh, one clip position on the needle on both sides. I'm going to keep them even. Some guys are, are jetting the mag side um, a little bit richer, I believe, if I'm, get, if I'm getting that right in my head. But I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to jet them the same. I'm not too worried if one cylinder is uh, a little bit cold. I'm not too worried about that. But we're going to get some jets. Um, unfortunately, this stuff can't be tested right now because we have zero snow anywhere in the province. So we're going to put this together and hope for some snow and hope that what we did works out. Because like you can see, the sled kind of gets pretty scrapped to do, to do this amount of work, right? To take the carbs off and, to, and adjust the floats and do the whole thing. It's a nuisance of a job. So I'm really hoping to not have to do this too many times. We're going to try. I think you might be able to spin the carbs and just get the main jet out from the bottom, which in this case, um, if you're not changing float height and you're not changing a few other things and doing this, obviously the, 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 the bowl had to come off to do the, uh, the hard jetting. So hopefully we can just take off this little screw and adjust the mains. Cause that's basically what I'm going to be adjusting once I, uh, once I get this back together. So, 
This is the fuel pump. I decided to take it out and have a look at it. A few screws and this cover comes off, it looks like. Um, this is the, uh, the line that goes to the engine. This is the fuel inlet, and these are the outlets to the carburetor. There's a thing online where uh, these sleds from the factory had some issues with the fuel pumps getting debris into them, fuel pumps failing, so people oftentimes will take them apart and just have a look at them and make sure everything's good. So I figured I'm this far in, and I'm waiting on jets anyways, I might as well pull this fuel pump apart just to have a look at it. All these screws look to be the same length. There we go. So you can see the fuel pump here. A couple of little diaphragms. I guess it works on the pulses of the engine. How it sucks and dries fuel. All right, we got no answer from our fuel pump. Everything looks fine. I mean, th there's nothing I see in there that was damaged or broken or gunked up or dirty. Everything looks totally clean. Everything looks, uh, all the seals look fine. So we'll go with it. That's all I'm doing on the sled with the fuel system. We check the carbs, verify everything. We're gonna hire a jet them. Like you've seen, fuel pump, it looks pretty good to me. I can't find any damage with it, no debris, no gunk, it looks perfect. Fuel tank looks perfect. Um, and we gotta fix that or get rid of that uh, fuel sight line. Apparently it's a really common problem. You see that all the time on the forums, guys deleting that stuff, saying they had issues and they fixed it. So they're pretty cool. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately we did a bunch of stuff here, so we're not gonna know the exact cause if this gets fixed, but uh, it'd be pretty funny if it was just a little fuel sight line that caused all these issues. But it does happen. I also hope that these issues didn't cause something bigger because the sled run, ran pretty good. Like you could get away with how it was running before. Um, you could just ride around the issues. Unfortunately, now we're going to we're re jetting, so we're going to make sure it's not too lean, too rich. We don't want to burn a cylinder and we don't want it to be too pig rich and be changing plugs every 15 minutes on the trail. That's going to suck. So hopefully, we get a little bit of testing done this sled. I'll show you guys the testing. Um, I'll bring you guys along for, the, for uh, the first rides and see how it runs. Hopefully, we're going to get pretty close on it. All right, thanks for watching. I'm going to call it for tonight. See you guys next time.